Okay, hello people. It's one more time check just before we open. At the third beep, it will be 9.27 and 15 seconds. Beep! I was about to say, I'm two seconds out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get ready. We're going to open the gates now. This is the first day of the festival, 2012, about to start. And a war, snake, slip it. See, young snake, isn't that or no? There's no such thing as a grapple. Oh! <laughs> I've been coming to the festival for about 12 years or something, just because I was invited. Yeah, for me, it's not really that important commercially. I mean, actually, the fee I get paid compared with the hours that my show takes to prepare to rehearse. I have six or seven actors with me who don't get paid and then you know I do a very long signing after so it's actually not a kind of um, money making thing for me except I suppose it spreads the word about some of the books. So I'm all come um, because of the ambiance meeting the other um, authors and illustrators and, and just a chance to to um, dramatise books, um, you know, because it's always fun to take a new book and work out how to stage it and how to involve children from the audience. Did you like it? Yeah. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah. What was the best bit? And the grapple was here. We are a big Julia Donaldson fan. We read her stories every night and I love the book festival. So, but this is the first year really that Jamie's been big enough to come and enjoy the shows because he's just really starting to get into reading and kind of was quite keen to bring him along so he gets to meet the people that actually write the books that he loves and reads and just keep him engaged with really, starting to learn. The world of books is a really interesting place at the moment because of course with e-books taking over the, the way in which people are reading is changing rapidly and the question that all literary festivals have to ask themselves is is that going to change the way we deliver literary festivals? Now, at the moment, that would, it would seem not. We've got more demand than ever before for hard copy, hardback books in our bookshop over there. And um, people still have a strong demand for ideas and discussion. However, this could all change. You know, we are, I think, in a very volatile period for publishing. And so we have to be really on our toes. My job is to be the, the face of the festival. And one of the really important things to do is to make sure that the authors are happy. So I talk a lot with them before the event about planning how the event will be. And then I think it's important I take them through from the author's yurt, which is where they prepare their event, down to the theatre wherever they're talking. And I think just to reassure them that we're looking after them right from their, whenever, when they arrive on site through to the end of their event. I, I think that authors need to feel that they're being looked after. And um, as a director, I, I was the one who read their book, invited them to come and speak. And I think it's important they feel that, that, that the director is passionate about what, what's, what this festival is. And so I, I can't see it, it's, it could not be my job. I think it has to be my job. I have been to the festival a number of times over the years, but the time I remember best was the time about six years ago when I came to talk about my then very recently published childhood memoir, a book called In the Blood, which I'd never read from before. Um, and it was a tremendously emotionally wrought thing uh, for me that book because it was so personal it was about I felt I was giving so much away about how I was brought up and my feelings about my parents and so on and so forth um, so it was very consoling to have a full tent and 
a very nice response to the bits and pieces that I read about it. It sort of set me up actually for the, the whole business of launching the book in a way that I hadn't anticipated and, and did find very heartening, I must say. Um, but more generally, I think that my feelings about that visit, and I'm feeling it again this time, even though I'm only here for a little less than 24 hours, is that the sense of civic concentration on a set of linked ideas which are made manifest in books, actual books or e-books or whatever, but are to do with writing specifically, is very consoling. I'm going to read the poem by John first and I'm going to try not to cry but I can't guarantee it. <laughs> John has been here for a number of years but he's just been refused asylum. I find it really hard not to connect to the emotion of all this so I'll just do my best and I'm here because um, writing really is a matter of life or death for some more than others you live like you don't live every minute is precious you don't know what will happen next You feel like you're in prison of mind and soul. You are free, but you don't know. They will come and take you, or not. You start feeling, maybe it's me. More worries than hope. Worry is, a, is solid like rock. You cannot wash it away. Hope is just like dust. Some people give you hope. Your hand is full of hope. It goes between your fingers. The wind can blow it away fast. Your hand is empty. I do think writing is a matter of life or death in terms of the survival of your spirit and your soul. And that did come out in one of the poems. And so it's just it's it really is a matter of survival i think and, and maybe some recovery and healing like the kind of therapeutic effect that it could have i don't think writing's always like that but i think it can be for some people it's important to have something like like that here because there's a lot of people here there's um, therefore a bit of high profile but it's so important that people are reminded and remind themselves of the hideous things that are going on in the world and connect to that a little bit